with the feast. Yesterday, we gathered at the tomb of Lazarus, dead, buried in the tomb, stinking after four days. Jesus hadn't bothered to show up in time to heal him before he died, or so it would look to people. But Jesus said to his disciples as he prepared to go, he's sleeping. And there's a number of places in the epistles where you'll see if it's translated correctly from the Greek that Paul speaks about those who have departed as sleeping, not dead. And I go now for your sake that you might see and understand, yes, he's dead. Cemetery, by the way, means sleeping place and is a declaration of the Christians of the resurrection. He was dead. And Jesus goes to raise him from the dead. It's not the first time Jesus raised someone from the dead. We know that he raised from the dead the son of the widow at Nain. But he died again. Elijah raised someone from the dead. And he died again. And of course, Lazarus was going to die again. Hades, with those first examples of death, giggled because it was just temp temporary. He knew he was going to end up receiving their souls into Hades, into the land of the dead, Sheol, translated hell, goddess of the land of the dead in Northern European languages, I'm still getting them back. This is just temporary. Even our dear brother in Christ, Father Sebastian, has brought many people back from the dead over the last few years while he was working with the homeless, people that had succumbed to overdoses of fentanyl or whatever and died. One case, in fact, when he and his wife were walking into one of the stores and saw a woman amongst another number of homeless collapse on the ground, and everyone's passing her by, and he's saying, she just died, and ran back to his vehicle and got his kit, and with six doses, brought her back to life. He has brought people back to life, and so do our physicians. But they all end up again in the tomb. Four days dead, Hades figured he had this one permanently. And can you imagine the cataclysm, the shaking that occurred in the land of the dead when Christ snatched Lazarus out of the grave so that he was not stinking, so that he was alive. This disturbed Hades greatly, and Satan, the one who helps to make sure we all end up there, they were shaken to the core. And so were, unfortunately, the leaders of Israel, the high priests, probably Herod. What's going on here? This man's been raised from the dead. The one who raised him is a problem. We've got to get rid of him once and for all, is what was being conspired between the unseen realm of Hades and the kingdoms of this world. We've got to get rid of him. And that scandalous example of someone who should have been dead forever, who was also raised. <coughs> Nevertheless, Many people had seen this man raised from the dead and were amazed, thrilled. He'd been healing them, 
forgiving their sins and raising the dead, overcoming death, which is, in fact, what our Lord and God desired our Lord Jesus Christ to come to earth for was to take away from us the fear of death because we would come to realize death has no power over us. And then he enters for the first time and only time by the nation, Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna means save us. Save us in the highest. Save us, Hosanna. Just as we say, Hallelujah, praise ye, Yahweh. And it's so amusing to hear atheists say, Hallelujah. They don't know what they're saying. They do not know what they're saying. Otherwise, they would go and spit it out of their mouths. The King of Glory comes, the one who overthrows Satan and death. How? Here. There. On the cross. When uh, he finally says, it's accomplished. I've done it. It's finished. I've succeeded. And took his last breath. And where does he go? He descends into the land of the dead. He says to Adam and Eve, for this death on the cross does not just save those present when he died, but it transforms history, transforms the universe right back to our founding sinners, Adam and Eve. He says, come on, let's get out of here. No more time here, let's get out. David and Solomon are shown in some of the icons of our resurrection icon, also being invited to leave. And the St. John Chrysostom in the sermon we're going to hear on Pascha night, not one soul remains in the grave. For Christ has come to do this. He enters today in victory. But people aren't cheering for him for the right reason. They still don't get it. And in just a few days, they're prepared to say, crucify him. He's a phony. He's a fake. We've been conned. And of course, a lot of fake news was going around, spread by the leaders of the world. He's a fake. Look. Where's the victory in a dead man on a tree? And it throws everybody off, including Peter who denies him three times and the other disciples who run, and John who weeps along with his, uh, the Lord's mother at the foot of his cross. Even they have lost hope at that moment. We know better or at least we should. But how many, how many in the world still aren't so sure? He kind of still is a fake. The world powers are still going around and with their wars, filling up Hades with souls, or so they think, or so they think. But on our walls, we declare that there are many whom we know for sure are not dead, nor are they, other than their bodies, sleeping, for they hear our prayers. They intercede to the Lord God and his Son and the Holy Spirit to save us, to heal us, to reunite persons who have allowed their egos and prides to separate them husbands and wives, parents and children, friends. No, the victor has come. He has overcome death and sin. And let us pray.
for all those who live sickness and sorrow, death, separation, convince us that the kingdom of God does not exist or does not have an existence or has come. Let us pray that their eyes be opened and let us also pray that our own eyes be opened to the assurance and the confidence so that as we walk through this week with our Lord, being invited to take up our crosses, to allow our mortal natures to die so that our immortal nature connected in Christ will rise with him now and in the age to come. We celebrate Hosanna in the highest. Our king has come and he is doing what he was called to do saving us and saving all those who will believe upon him with the feast. <laughs>